You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Okay, so the moment that we knew was coming for, I don't know, a couple of years. The January 6th committee has recommended four criminal charges for Trump over the Capitol breach they had nothing to do with. And I'll, I'll read through this article that gives us all the details in a minute. But, you know, this is a period in American history that is the most frightening of all, I think, out of, out of our over 200 years. There, there's never been a time when there has been so little freedom uh, other than the slaves, okay? I don't want to take away from the slaves. At least this the only time there's been so little freedom that other than the slaves, well, we've known about it. You know, we got the Twitter files. There's a Twitter file part seven that just came out. They, call, they didn't call it a part seven, but the Twitter files part seven came out, which just revealed just insanely crazy things. These criminal referrals against Trump, which are insane, and I do believe that they are going to arrest Donald Trump. If you watch what's going on, they're terrified of Trump. They're terrified of the MAGA movement. And, you know, people, you know, I don't think understand in this country what's going on. Now, those of you that listen to this program, you're very well informed as to what's going on. But I, I, just, I just say a couple things about it. I'm of the opinion that Donald Trump is the first person to ever become president of the United States, certainly in the modern era, but he may be the only person to become president since Washington, but certainly in the modern era, who hasn't been in the pocket of the donors. And the the people that have been presidents in the past didn't just happen into it. Many of them, and you know, were it was a legacy thing like Bush or even John Quincy Adams, right? Because their dads were presidents. Um, Barack Obama. Now, we, Barack Obama wasn't that famous, it, but he didn't come out of out of just nowhere. You know, when when he was in the state government in in uh, Illinois, he spoke at the DNC convention. They were grooming him, and he was approached by Harry Reid, who was the Democrat Senate leader at the time, behind Hillary's back to run for president. And he had big people behind him, including the Kennedys. The Kennedys, remember the Kennedy family that are behind Buttigieg now, backed backed. Obama. Mm-hmm. So everyone that has been president in our lifetimes, without a doubt, and certainly I think ever, has been in the pocket of the special interests of society. Even, you know, the great George George Washington was a great man. I'm not I'm not critic I will never criticize George Washington. And I don't want this to be taken as criticism. He was one of the wealthiest men in the American colony. Some say he was the richest. It's, it's up for debate. But he, if he wasn't the richest, he was the, in the top couple, right? He was like the Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos of the day. Do you think it is just a coincidence that the man who may have been the richest man in the colonies, if not the richest, he was in the top two or three. I think he was the richest, though. Um, well, he married into money. He didn't grow up rich. But he still had the money. No, but I'm saying he, he grew up poor. But he ha- sort of poor, but he happened to live yeah. across the river from his wife's family, and yeah. he knew her family. And well, he slept he wasn't his way into poor, but he he definitely well, married into that kind it, of money for it, sure. It, it doesn't matter how he got it; his he in-laws had were it. very connected. By the way, very connected politically. It is not a coincidence yeah. that the richest man in the colonies, certainly in the top couple richest men in the colonies, like yeah. he was the richest. Like I said, ended up running both the um, Continental Army, and then was the first president. It's not a coincidence. Oh, I agree. You know, and, and if you want to talk about the corruption, even in that era, do you think it's a coincidence that the capital city of the United States is, is uh, right up the river from Washington's estate at Mount Vernon? Of course not. I talked about this many times. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, another great man and a, that, that you don't have any ill will for, and none of us would say anything negative, but he was a, uh, an attorney for the railroads, which was the big tech GM of its day. Uh, Eisenhower. Eisenhower was a great man, but he was in with the big, rich corporate donors of that era. And that's how he got. So President Trump is the first president that I know of, like I said, certainly in the modern era, 
that couldn't be bought, couldn't be influenced because he had so much money that he couldn't be bought or influenced by money and didn't go into the office for any type of gain. The other ones Mm -hmm. all had gain, even the early ones, you know, like, like Washington, there were some, there was a lot of personal things. They were tired of paying those taxes to England. They wanted, they wanted to have the tax money here at home. You know, I don't have to go through the American history book with you guys. You You guys understand what I mean. He is the first president that I know of that had nothing to gain, only to lose, and has such a great agenda. And he's the only president that it was not elected by the special interest of the time, the donors of the time, mm-hmm. or forced upon us by the political parties in power at the time. He was actually chosen by the people. And if you go back to the first campaign, he snuck in below the radar in the beginning. When he first started running, everyone, including the, the Fox Newses, thought it was a joke. And then he started winning. And remember, he was in the debates in the first race and the primaries, they were positioned on the stage based to how they were polling. Trump was always right front and center. And the and the establishment kept trying to put like Jeb or whoever was a number two closer to him so they'd be equal to him. That never really happened that way. There was one debate where they kind of did it. And they ju- these people lost control. I saw the, the, the this January 6th committee. This is what is it's, – it's, the whole thing is sick, okay? Yeah. That January 6th committee today with the criminal referrals to Merrick Garland, that was a unanimous vote. You know, when, when something comes up like that, the, the Republicans are supposed to be up there voting no. But it was a unanimous vote, mm-hmm. and, and these, these – Well, you had Republicans, yeah, exactly, and they wouldn't let – certain people on there didn't they didn't jim jordan want to be on that and yeah they kept certain people off that they knew would not the whole thing he was railroaded from the beginning and i think and i've said this all along that he was even railroaded when somebody suggested um to have this rally on january 6th i think somebody put that in his ear Mm -hmm. pumped it up and said it'd be great it'd be amazing the people will come and support you And I think the minute he agreed to that, yep. the the everything started, all the balls yep. started to roll and everything they started to set up into place yep. for certain things to happen. And and he's just been railroaded uh, from the beginning on this. Now, my question for you is, there's four charges well, here. Let, let me get to those again because I'll forget this one thing, Kathy, because I'll forget this one thing. Okay, I watch these snakes from the committee. I'm not playing any sound bites from these jerks, Okay. These people from the committee today, I'm not playing any sound bites from them here on the podcast, and I have zero plans on playing any of their sound bites on the radio tomorrow unless one of them says something really stupid that I got to play. But these people, the look on their – they think they're, they're in the history books now. It, it, did you see the war criminal's daughter, Liz Cheney, had – she did her hair mm-hmm. and makeup. I've never seen her have her makeup like this. Oh, because she got all dressed up for the occasion. She got she got all dressed up and she did wow. her makeup, which she never does. She always looks terrible. Not that she looked great with the makeup, and she 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 applied That's it a amazing. little too heavily. I mean, she she looks ridiculous. That means she hired somebody to do it. Well, she did her makeup today, Liz Cheney. Because she hired a makeup artist. Yeah. Well, she did her makeup today yeah. because she thinks she's in a history page book now. Oh, Maybe. I'm in history. I'm gonna be. I gotta look good. I'm going to be in the history. You're going to be in the history books of snakes like like Benedict Arnold and all those other low lives. I mean, I, these these people are disgusting. Well, this is a big disgusting. It's like she got dressed up for the prom. I mean, she got dressed up to like be. Her, this is her big well, moment. Th- this thing. She she thinks she's going to be in history books over this, and she thinks that the they did their their speeches, which I'm not. I didn't listen to them, and I'm not going to play them to you guys. But she thinks that those 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 visuals are mm-hmm. going to be around forever because she did such a great thing. How many people are dead because of it? You know, I, that makeup she was wearing was paid for with blood money from her war criminal fund. So let, let's go through this um, Well, I, I story. texted you the charges. Uh, there's a, a okay. an image if you go to your text, uh, and it quickly explains all, right. uh, all the charges. Yeah, I'll go through the charges. All the four he's right. been charged with. Yeah. You want to go over that Yeah, quickly. these these are the four charges. No, number one, obstruction of an official proceeding. Number two, conspiracy to defraud the United States. Three, conspiracy to make a false statement. Four, incite, assist, and or aid or comfort an insurrection. This is all BS. He didn't well, do me, any of those things. Let me ask you this, and I agree, but say they these are just recommended to the DOJ. 
Say that and they got four charges, so they can just pick one. They don't have to charge him with all four. Correct. So say they charge him with one or two. Then what happens? Does he actually get arrested? What happens yeah. if they decide yeah. to charge him the, with these one are, or two if, of these? Okay, Merrick Garland. So he is, gets arrested if now, they now, decide. Mer- Merrick Garland is a nasty man. He's, oh, he, he's going to charge him for sure. He's pissed off that he's yeah. not on the Supreme Court. Yeah. You know, the Supreme Court, he may be seeming like he's higher than that now, but the Supreme Court is a lifetime job of prestige where you have to do nothing. Okay. And then they make statues of you, you know, oh, and yeah, that's a big deal. And he blames Trump and the Republicans for, for not having that. So he's, he's pissed. The, the, this, this isn't like a civil thing. These are criminal. Right. Things. So the criminal referrals go to uh, Merrick Garland. If he decides to charge him, they got to go to a grand jury to get an indictment. When, when you get Most an, that'll happen when It'll you be in DC, the yeah, liberals. Yeah. When you get an indictment, then you, you, you and you're going to charge them. You got to arrest the person oh and book gosh. them. So, so they're going to arrest it's Donald Trump. It's no, gonna happen. they're going to arrest Donald Trump. He, they, he is going to be arrested. They fantasize about seeing him with handcuffs behind bars. And I hate to say it, but I almost think they're going to make that happen. I of hope course. they don't. And then, and you know what I mean? Yes. But, uh, and yeah. believe me, it's not just the liberals that want to see him arrested. There's not, and not just Kinzinger and Cheney. There are plenty of rhinos, Romney, Paul Ryan, that are help, even people that are out of office, the Bushes. There are plenty of people behind this with a lot of power that are going to make sure this happens. And I don't think there's anything he can do to stop this, President Trump, other than, and I've said this before, going to them privately and saying, I will drop out of the race if you don't charge me and, um, ma- and make a deal. Good- I don't think he would do that, but that's no. the only thing I think that no, would he stop won't, them. He won't because do that. Because their whole goal, and Adam Kinzinger even said it, and he tweeted today, their entire goal is they want to see him behind bars, but more importantly than that, they don't want him to run for office again, and they want to keep him out of the White House. That is their main goal here. They would love for the aesthetic of him to be arrested and all that. But the main goal is to get him out of politics permanently. Mm-hmm. They don't want him running. They don't want, because you're right, they're afraid of him. Yeah. They're afraid of what he accomplishes and what he does. I mean, that is really what this is all about. He messes up all their dirty deals and everything. He doesn't play their game. He plays by his own rules. He's there for the American people. He does things that they don't like. And they are really afraid of him even more so than ever getting in a second time, uh, knowing what he knows now. And he, believe me, he knows a lot more than he knew going in. He's been president. He's had people betray him. You know, think of all the people he went into the office trusting that have turned on him. All these Judases. Oh, yeah. That have been, like, like Judas was Jesus's friend. He hung out with him. I'm not saying comparing Trump to Jesus, but the betrayal is, there's a betrayal here. These are people that were Trump's, friends that's right and sat with him dined with him hung out with him um and made him believe that, all snakes that th- that he he was safe confiding in them mm-hmm. all these people that have women that work for him that he gave them a chance and now they're on the view bashing him i mean so many people just i don't understand why so many people have I guess it's lucrative. I guess it's lucrative to betray well, Trump now, and to get on TV. Now, I want to take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters here. We're coming down to the end of the year and the start of a new one. And uh, those of you that are our Patreon supporters, thank you so much for your support. Your support as a Patreon supporter helps us out a lot, and it is greatly appreciated. If you would like to become a Patreon supporter, there's a link in the episode description. And there's also a direct link on my website, briancraigshow.com. And one of the benefits to becoming a Patreon supporter is for those that are top Patreon supporters, our top Patreon supporters, get a live on-air thank you on each and every episode. So the names you will hear now are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, Gary, E-T-W, Chuck, D, Pamela, Rick, Nick, Wesley, Macho, and Rome, Wisconsin. These are our top Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. And again, uh, if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, there's a link in the episode description and also a direct link on my website, briancraigshow.com. 
All right, a couple more things about this. Um, they are going to arrest Donald Trump. When do you think they'll make a decision? What, how fast? They've already this will decided. Quickly, don't, no, I mean the DOJ. When do you think this will? When do you think they'll start officially? Next year. They're not going to do it right now. You don't they, think no, so? They're going to let this. They got to act as if there's due process and consideration. Okay. They they decided long ago. You know, and right. and, and let me tell you, they they impeached him multiple times. And uh, they couldn't get a conviction there. This, they just got to go to a grand jury filled with D.C., yep. Virginia liberals who yep. work for the government. They get the indictment. Then they go to federal court in the in the D.C., Virginia area. They get a liberal jury of a bunch of bureaucrats that work for the government, and they get the conviction. And the and they and they oh put gosh. Donald Trump in jail. And and here's here's this the is thing. Unbelievable! What's happening? Here, here's here's the thing. Okay. He's he's not done anything wrong. He's not done anything wrong. And, you know, what Kathy was talking about at the beginning about the speech, I've been talking about this for a long time. There has been uh, a, 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 there, there's a lot of people that have betrayed Trump, but there is someone who has been in his inner circle all these years who's been the biggest betrayer. And I'll walk you through three of them. OK. The, the final one mm-hmm. is the speech on January 6th. Whose ever idea it was, yeah. I'm not talking about who went to Trump and said, you, you should do this. There was someone who had the first, who, who, there, was a yeah. me, it, there was a meeting somewhere. It could be a lower level person. It, it could be a high level person. But there was a meeting somewhere mm-hmm. with Trump's people where the very first person had the idea and vocalized it of him giving a speech on January 6th. Yeah. Whoever that person is, is the big, big snake spy in Trump's orbit. Whoever that is, was involved with the idea to pick Pence as vice president. I agree. And the first attorney general that appointed Mueller. Okay. Maybe it was the so, son in law. So whoever, now it wasn't Jared. Who, whoever, you never whoever know. did, whoever had the original germ of an idea to do yeah. the, the attorney general, uh, the vice president pick, and the speech of Jerry. It's the same person. You think so? And they're the they're the bad guy. Okay, they're, well, the, let's, they're the let's, spy. Let's think. Let's name three people that could be on that list. I say Jared. Who else could be they on could, that list? Kelly and Conway. There's a lot of people it could be. It's someone either it's either someone that's low or mid level that has the ear of important people that can go yeah. up, or it's someone we know and trust and the President Trump trust. And it and if it's that if it's that kind of person. It's it's like a Kelly. I'm not saying it is Kellyanne Conway. She's pretty connected but, to the but state I, through her husband. Let me tell you, this is this is the thing. Okay, this 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 this, this, this is the thing with Kellyanne Conway. Yeah, K- Kathy and I have been married a long time. We just had our 26th wedding anniversary a couple weeks ago, and I know a lot of you guys out there were married. When you're married, if you there there are certain things. Mm-hmm. That you can't stay married on if 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 you're not on the same page, you can get by being married and liking different things on television. You you can get by being married not right. liking sports, but your husband is obsessed with football. Right. Okay. But when when you have an obsession like Kellyanne Conway's freaky weirdo husband with his anti-Trumpism, I think you're onto something. And with and her. and Kellyanne Conway. Yeah. Kellyanne Conway, she's been around for a long time, but and her- he really trusts yeah, her too. And Kellyanne Conway, and, and still to this day, yeah, Ke- Kellyanne Conway, um, her her whole claim to fame is she got Trump elected with Bannon in the first yeah. campaign. And it just doesn't make sense to me that the two of them can be married when they are so polar opposite on something that's so key. And he's so nasty yeah, and vindictive- true. Um, uh, about his hatred of Trump, she's she's suspect number one to me, yeah. and she has been for a long time. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't know who it is. But but whoever's idea it was to pick the vice president, the attorney general, and the speech on January sixth is the same person who had the original idea, and that's yeah. the big bad guy. I think you're right in Trump's orbit, who's been sabotaging him for years, and I they're think, probably still with him. I think with Trump, I think he's he's. Such a nice guy. He's too trusting. And I think he has had a lot of loyalty in his business life. But I think he really felt that poli- he would get the same kind of loyalty in politics. 
And I think he went into it kind of naive, like any of us would who doesn't have that experience. Yeah. And I feel that he really trusted so many people, which he probably should not have. And that isn't to fault him. That's just to show what a nice guy he is. And I think maybe he still is trusting people he should not trust for whatever mm. reason. Um, uh, you know, and he gets bad advice. Sometimes he takes it, sometimes he doesn't, uh, for whatever reason, but I don't know how this is going to play out. I don't, I know he posts on truth, um, which I forget to check all the time. I wish, I really wish he was on Twitter right now. I think that's a huge mistake, but I, I don't know. This is really frightening to me. And I, Mm -hmm. and that, that they, I think you're right. I think they're definitely, the DOJ will charge him with at least. Oh yeah two counts. I don't think all four, you never know, but at least one or two. And I think he will get indicted. Well, they need, uh, Kathy, and they I think need, they will arrest him. And then what, and then what happens? They I mean, need, say they, they charge him, then he gets arrested and he gets, char- does he actually go to jail? He could. Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. Jeez. And, and, Incredible. um, yeah, that is such a sad, no, I'm they, serious. They don't care about dividing the country. They don't care about how we yeah, feel. Yeah, no, this could happen. They they see us all as enemies. They hate all of us. Yeah, we're stupid. They you know, know what's best. they don't. They don't. They don't care about well, about that Kathy, or public. The one opinion. they need is the insurrection charge to keep him off the ballot. Okay, that's the that's one. The, they're the get main him one. That's the that's one the one they need him with to keep him off the ballot. All right. Well, now we'll listen. See what we're going to take our break. When we come back, there's a lot more to talk about. Don't go anywhere. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be right back. Brighten your morning with the smell of freshly roasted coffee beans. Experience a melody of flavorful coffee notes every day with premium fresh roast coffee from Java Acoustic Coffee. Enjoy fresh premium coffee in your favorite form. K-cups, fine ground, whole bean, or a variety pack. Choose from their selection of premium coffee roast and blends like Cowboy, Ethiopian, Blue Bali, Caramel, or just a classic house blend. Give your favorite coffee drinker a gift they'll be jumping out of bed for every morning. Get the fresh coffee feeling delivered straight to your doorstep with java acoustic coffee coffee that helps you resonate with your sound throughout your day visit javaacousticcoffee.com to order right now javaacousticcoffee.com Diamonds are certainly beautiful, but very expensive. You may not be able to afford diamonds, but you can afford the look with moissanite. Moissanite is a naturally occurring crystal that looks just like diamonds. Jewelry made from this mineral is stunning and very affordable. The Etsy shop, Moissanite Rings Co., that's all one word on Etsy.com, sells handcrafted amazing rings, earrings, bracelets, and much more. Shop their diamond wedding and engagement rings and bands. No one will know they are not real diamonds. You deserve better, economical, eco-friendly, and conflict-free fine moissanite diamond jewelry. Available at Moissanite Rings Co. on Etsy. That's all one word on Etsy.com. Buy any ring above $100 and you'll get a matching band for just a dollar. Perfect for yourself or as a gift. Moissanite Rings Co. on Etsy.com. Start shopping right now. From author Douglas Hurley comes your next must-read book, No Solace in Death, a hard-boiled detective novel available on Amazon. Meet private detective Benjamin Thomas. He's hired to find Beatrice, a woman with a troubled past, a smarmy ex-husband, a cunning insurance salesman, a landlord with knuckle dusters, and a psychiatrist with links to MK Ultra. They all seem to have played a part in her disappearance. Ben follows a trail of dead bodies down a rabbit hole where he uncovers a sinister plot certain to change America's future. His final showdown against the conspirators not only has him facing death, but the loss of his soul. What happens next? Find out when you read No Solace in Death, a hard-boiled detective novel from author Douglas Hurley. Available on Amazon in Kindle and paperback. Order your copy right now. If you're looking for stocking stuffers for your kids this holiday season, there's a fun novelty gift you'll want to check out. The Forwell Fun Toss Hoop is a gift your kids will use all year round. You can add fun to any meal with the Forwell Fun Toss Hoop. It's a mini basketball hoop that fits on the rim of any mug, bowl, or cup. Make breakfast fun. Your kids will love shooting hoops with their morning cereal or crackers in their soup. It's the perfect gift for everyone. Grab one for your kids, grandkids, or even secret Santa exchanges. 
you'll be the holiday MVP. Give the joy of making every meal game time with the Four Well Fun Toss Hoop. Order yours online right now at FunTossHoop.com. Use the discount code radio for 10% off your purchase. Visit FunTossHoop.com and order your Four Well Fun Toss Hoop. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Pence gave an interview today with Dana Perino. And who, who's that guy that she does the show with during oh, the Bill day? Bill Hemmer. Yeah, Bill Hemmer. Uh, Pence was on Fox today with Himmer and Perino. And let me tell you, this guy's scummy. I, I, I never liked Pence, okay? And I, I used to criticize Pence, and people would give me a hard time about it. And I said, and this was my criticism of Pence, mm-hmm. I, I got a pretty good read of people. And I, and I always said, the reason I don't trust Pence is because you don't know what he is really like. You know, and he's, he's, too, he's too wooden. He's, you know, you don't know what his real personality is like. Don't trust him. I, and, and, I, and I said that during the whole first term. The only time I loosened up on him is when Trump put him in charge of the COVID task force, and he, he did some good stuff there. Yeah, you never liked him. But you I always had a feeling about him, and I would always defend him. And you were right. I mean, he's a snake. Yeah, so I, a fraud. I want to go through this interview with him today. And you can see, and the reason I, I'm doing this, mm-hmm. I'm going to play most of it, and we'll talk about it as we go. This is Pence today on Fox. They're, they know that these criminal referrals are coming in. It's with Perino and uh, what's the other guy's name again, Kathy? Hemmer. Hemmer, Bill Hemmer on Fox. This guy is sick. Mike Pence is sick. And I'm starting to think he's broke. Because he's he every every sentence is in my book and by my book. I think you're right. About and that. I don't know what he's got so far as debts or something. I, I know he's got a great pension as vice president and all that. And I think that's why but he's, he's going to run for president because it's lucrative. Yeah. He's to me. Yeah. He sounds like a guy who's who's desperate for money. Yeah, I think so. But so but, too. but just the the type of person. He is. So let's go through this. This is this is Pence on Fox today. If you feel that way and answered it that way, yeah. then you don't believe it should be a criminal case that should be referred to the Department of Justice. Is, well, that, is I, that what you're saying? Well, I wrote this in my book. Uh, See, there you go. I wrote this oh in my, my book. Gosh. I wrote this in my book. That should be part of a drinking game. You know what I yeah. mean? Every time he says in my book, you take a shot. Everybody be That's drunk. A perfect drinking Everybody game. be drunk real yeah. quick with that. For sure. Well, is that what you're saying? Well, I wrote this in my book uh, that uh, how many times uh, Adam Schiff said that there was evidence of collusion with Russia. Two and a half years we listened to Adam Schiff talk yeah. about evidence that he had seen that uh, that was never there. Let, but let, me, let me be very clear about this point. Um, uh, Congress has, has no formal role uh, in Justice Department decisions, so they can make recommendations today. Okay. Uh, and the thing here with Pence, Pence is the most do- disloyal man to ever be vice president of the United States. You know, the the answer is Donald Trump is not a criminal. He committed no crimes. He did nothing wrong. This committee should not be referring anything. This is a political move and a political witch hunt. But what he he's implying that Trump mm-hmm. is guilty of criminal things. He's yeah. just saying that the Congress, you know, they can only recommend. Oh, well, I think he really believes that. Uh, but when it comes to the Justice Department's decision about about um, about bringing charges in the future, I, I would hope that they would not bring charges against the former president. I, I don't look. I as I wrote in my book, I think yeah, there's the book again. There's the book again. Oh T- take another shot, everybody. It's a oh you know, my god. Yeah, done the shot of tequila. <laughs> said the book. Again. That's really bad. He would not bring really charges. Sound different. He sounds like he has a southern accent a little bit to me. Like that's almost an like Indiana. a southern draw. Indiana has kind of a country draw, thing going on. Say. Does it? Okay. Against the former president. I, I don't – look, I, as I wrote in my book, I think the president's <laughs> actions and words on January 6th were reckless. Um, but I don't know that it's, know. it's criminal to Got take it. bad advice from lawyers. I don't know that it's criminal. He's not mm. saying Trump is not a criminal. Mm. He's unsure. And uh, 
And so I, I well, hope the Justice be, Department is careful. There might be criminal on that, too. Well, right, so we'll, we'll see on that. Well, but Dana, I, I want to tell you, I, I, uh, I hope the Justice Department understands the magnitude of the very idea of sure. indicting a former president of the United States. I think that would be terribly divisive in the country at a time when the American people want to see us heal. <laughs> Blah, he, blah, blah, blah. No, he he wants it to happen. And if you hear, he keeps implying that Trump did did commit crimes, yeah. but for the betterment of the country, we shouldn't. He wants know, to run for sure. president. Of course, he wants mm-hmm. Trump in jail. Mm-hmm. At this time of year, we're all thinking about the most important things in our lives, our faith, our family. And my hope is the Justice Department will think very carefully. And your whole family will be together order. for the for all the families getting together for the first time in three years. You told us, which will be very exciting. And well, you you wrote the book. We have there goes the book again. Why, hold on. There goes the book. Why again. is this exciting? that Mike Pence's family is getting together. Who cares? I mean, don't who all we, families get together at Christmas? And who who is his family? I don't even care. Who cares? Oh, the Pences. Ooh. Dana Perino is such a idiot. Washington. Yeah, low life. Read Suck that up. you are considering your future. Political had this headline today. It's just Politico, right? It says uh, Pence has a huge problem. He's struggling to find his path back to the White House. Do you think you would make a decision after the holidays as to whether you would get in for the presidency? And if not the presidency, would you be open to running in that Senate seat in Indiana? Well, I would tell you, I've had the privilege of serving in Congress in the House of Representatives. Um, Governor of Indiana and Vice President of the United States is an incredible privilege for me. And uh, my family is going to take time uh, over this holiday season uh, when we're all together for the first time in three years to give prayerful consideration uh, to where we might next step forward to serve our country. Uh, okay. Now, a couple things about this. Isn't he, doesn't he sound sleazy? Yeah. Pence. So Pence is getting the whole family together for Christmas for the well, first Dana time. Dana Perino's excited yeah, about that. But think, I want you to think about this. Does anybody buy this line? So Pence is getting his family together for Christmas for the mm. first time in three years, and they're going to sit around in a prayer circle and pray, for, and, pray and decide what he's going to do with no. the future? No. Give me a break. He's first, a he's, he's a liar. Yeah. And, and to bring the whole family together to sit around a circle and pray about what he's going to do is, you know, is pretty self-centered. I've always found that public figures, especially that wear their religion on their sleeve, yeah. are frauds. They're frauds. And he is the kind of guy who constantly refers to his religion and his faith too much. And it's almost like he uses it to get away with things. And I don't like it. And and I see, you know, before I thought he was a good guy. And I, mm-hmm. I see what a Scumbag. phony he is Scummy. now. Scummy. And he's he's a huckster. Yes. And uh, and you're right. He just needs money. But anybody who constantly refers to praying and religion over and over and over again is a fraud. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. They're they're not they're not the real deal. Back to sleazeball pens here. But for us, it's always about a calling. Oh, there we go. Here's here's another one. Yeah. He's he's talking about himself like in the plural for us. Right. Or I, I don't know what 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 how would what would I think he's just like, like referring it's, you know to that's his called family, that's called, no no he's saying us for us this is like the royal we the royal we, the royal we. Yeah. like the queen would say we right. yes you know, if if you read my book Dana I'd be honored if you go again third time third <laughs> time take another shot of tequila if I'm you sure buy my Dana's book read his book now now listen to this Dana's starting to get annoyed at the book pushing you think so yeah yeah listen listen no, she's no, getting no. annoyed. For us, it's always about a calling. I mean, I, if, if you read my book, Dana, and I'd be honored if you did, you'll find early in my political career, I allowed yep. my ambition to get ahead of my Christian faith, what See, I thought my go. faith required of me in the public square. Uh, but the last 20 years, it's been about a calling and about trying to respond oh, to that God. call. So we're, we're going to listen to one another. We're going to pray. We're going to continue to listen to the American people. And uh, sometime in the course of the next year, I think we'll be able to discern that. And I yeah. promise. Is the Senate race at all a possibility? You know, I served as president of the Senate uh, yeah. for four years. See, this, let me tell you, Pence is the kind of guy, I know guys like this. You never ask them a question because they give you a 10,000 word answer. Oh my God. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, you, ever, you know anybody, you ask them a question, they go on. They go on so long, they're like punishing you. Yeah. For asking questions. That was a great privilege. Was that enough? But, uh, for us, I, I, I would tell you that the extraordinary experiences that we've had in our life. Back to Royal We. He's talking. They got the Royal We there. Arrogant. Uh, 
the response that we've gotten to telling our story in my book, So Help Me God. Okay. Oh Is that the third or fourth <laughs> that's time? The fourth, that's the fourth oh time. God. See, and just- Fourth just, time. And <clears throat> what to what I was speaking about- Take another shot of tequila, guys. The title of his <laughs> book- is so help me God. Yeah. There's another example of him wearing his religion on his sleeve yeah. and using it to give him credibility. He's using his religion yeah. to make him look credible. Pants is a snake. Like, you know, you can trust me. Mm -hmm. I'm a man of God in this and that. Uh, anybody who promotes themselves that much, it's too much as being a man of God is no man it's of God. It's too much. I so four times, we're that. at four now? Okay, I rewound it a little bit. Yeah, so the next four one- four so far. I rewound it a bit, so the next one will still be four. So you, <laughs> okay, you've had your okay. four shots of tequila. Are you drunk yet with the yeah, Penn's book drinking sure. game? Just in this uh, little sound bite right here. The response that we've gotten to telling our story in my book, So Help Me God, the encouragement oh. from around the country has oh. us just thinking about maybe, uh, maybe one more season of service and- uh, um, um, oh, is, he does nothing but serve this himself. Makes you want to throw We're up. thinking about one more season of service. Who well, talks like this? He's trying the to jerk. act like he's making such a big sacrifice yeah. by running service. Yeah. A season, like, like he's so sanctimonious here uh, ab about, you know, well, I'll, I'll think about it if I want to serve the American. Give me a break. Do you know what the unreleased Eddie and the Cruisers album was called? Mm-mm. I'm not going to tell you guys because there's a hint in what Penn said. Let me know in the comments if you know the name of the unreleased Eddie Wilson album. I hope you tell me off the air. Yeah, Eddie, yeah, Eddie, yeah. I'll tell you. I'll tell you during the break. Movie. Let me know you in the watch comments that again. That's a great the, movie. The name of the Eddie Wilson unreleased mm. album and um, whatever happened to my. The reason I asked that so gorgeous. The reason I asked that question. Yeah. OK, is I think that Mike Pence is an Eddie and the Cruisers fan Maybe. and is a big fan of Eddie Wilson and is using Eddie Wilson lines I think I in his it. speech. But I, don't say I it. Let, I me, know it. let me know it's, in the, the comments. The season tips you off. No, well, don't don't give anybody hints, Kathy, but okay. let, let me know in the Sorry. comments. I was just thinking about maybe uh, maybe one more season of service, and um, uh, that's the one we're focused on. Okay, we'll put you down as a maybe. We're, we're, we're a I took it as a no. Uh, <laughs> yes, for the possible White House run, but maybe a no for the Senate run. That's uh, how I took it. I think if, if, uh, if, if we were ever to step forward to serve uh, the American people, it would be to take all the experience that we've had and, and run. For you hear that oh royal God. we again? That royal we, all, we will take all the experience we have in another season of service. National office, yeah. and, uh, and but I'm always humble to be asked. You know, somebody asked me the other day. Oh, I'm always, this guy is anything but humble. Yeah, no. Don't worry, guys, we're at the end of Pence. Oh, please make it stop. And run for national office, yeah. and, uh, and but I'm always humble to be asked. You know, somebody asked me the other day if I ever thought about running for president, and I said, no more, no less than any other kid that grew up with a cornfield in his backyard. So. Oh, God. Oh, my goodness. What is he, Clark Kent? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Cornfield, yeah. Oh my goodness! That's funny. Oh my goodness! That was probably what the it? most revealing interview he's ever he's given. Sick, you, psychotic. Yeah, he, he really is. He's a sociopath. You really see it in that interview. He's a sociopath. Yeah, he is really. Um, yeah. Wow, that's a very revealing interview about us into his psyche. Yeah, it's a disturbing place. Yeah, Mr. Christian. Yeah, no, exactly. He's no, there's no humility in that man at all. No humility at all. I, I don't. He's a big phony. I, you know I, what yeah. it is? He has yeah. this, he has this image and, and a lot of Christians are like this and I'm a Christian too, but a lot of Christians are like this. They have in their mind, like what they feel a Christian should be. And they play that part when they're around their friends or when they're at church or on TV, but they're really not like that at all. But when they're in the public eye in any way around anybody, they play that role and they, and they talk about it so much. Like, you know what I mean? And that's how I feel he is. He's playing a part in his mind. And then at home, he's probably very different. I would yeah. imagine. I, you, I, you yeah. know. And as arrogant as he sounds, I saw this interview you could see it in his body language. Just think of that fly landing oh. on his head and uh, just yeah. keep that image in your mind. That's pretty yeah. poignant. Well, you know what flies love. You That's guys can right. worry about that. But don't don't tell me that in the comments. What they're attracted don't to. Don't tell us that in the comments. But um, we're going to break. But in the comments, 
Tell me the name, if you know, of the unreleased Eddie know, Wilson, Eddie and the Cruisers album. And based on what Mike Pence was saying there, does it sound like he's lifting from Eddie and the Cruisers there? All right, listen, we're going to take our break. When we come back, there's more to talk about. And I, I apologize for playing Pence for you, but I, there, I, I, I played it because I think that was... I've I've seen a few interviews with Pence. When I see Pence on TV, I turn him off. I don't listen to Pence. I'm not interested in Pence. But when I was telling you guys at the beginning of the his wife of, does the same thing. Yeah. When I was telling you guys at the beginning of the segment that I never trusted Pence because you can never see his true personality. This interview, you see his true personality. He's a sleazy For sure. very real. He's a sleazy fake huckster. He's he's like the worst kind of Faith healing preacher there's ever that's ever lived. All right, I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll take that break and be right back. Want to know where all the bodies are buried? Author Robert Allen Miltonberg holds the key to that question in his book, Pool Boy to the Mob, Everybody Out of the Pool. Author Robert Allen Miltonberg holds the key to that question in his book, Pool Boy to the Mob. Welcome to Mob Amy Beach. This book is a fictionalized account of Miltonberg working at a mob-owned Miami Beach hotel in the 70s. If you're a fan of The Godfather, Goodfellas, or The Sopranos, you will love this story. It's full of colorful characters and wisecracking wise guys. It's a story with everything from playboy bunnies and weaponized parrots to shattering the glass ceiling and getting away with murder all in paradise. This is a wise guy tale you've never heard. Surrounded by pools, the trick for Bobby Moskowitz was not slipping in the one thicker than water. Bobby lived to tell the tales and now you can read all about it. The funniest mob novel since Jimmy Breslin's The Gang That Couldn't Shoot Straight. Pool Boy to the Mob. Everybody out of the pool. From author Robert Allen Miltenberg, available on Amazon. Order your copy right now. Do you want to get your kids a toy they'll really love? The Kids Thrill Kids Airplane Toy on Amazon is an exciting airplane ready for takeoff. Let your children transform into pilots and experience a fun playtime with the Kids Thrill Kids Airplane Toy. It's perfect for kids of all ages who love airplanes. This toy promotes fun and engaging playtime as well as a creative imagination. The bright colors and wheels will help your children visualize the airplane's toy action like a real pilot. And with lights and sound, allow your children child to learn motor skills and help them develop their creativity to stimulate their brain development it makes a great gift and the fun doesn't stop there either kids thrill on amazon have a lot of other toys too including fun and educational toys for babies toddlers and children of all ages including stacking cups baby toys toy trucks like their fire trucks garbage truck and construction trucks the prices at kids thrill have huge discounts for the holiday season going on right now kids thrill take great pride in in their customer service and the quality of their toys. So what are you waiting for? Go to Amazon.com right now and search Kids Thrill for endless hours of fun for your kids. Kids Thrill on Amazon. Start shopping right now. Are you looking for a book about real lives and real people? A book that will make you laugh, cry, and laugh again? Then order your copy of The Adventures of Harley, not Davidson, from author Harley Angel. Available on Audible. Narrated by James Pryor. The Adventures of Harley, not Davidson is a memoir that's filled with fun, danger, motorcycle gangs, and even a first kiss. Join Harley on his adventure and experience all the things he's been through in his 50 years. Living between motorcycle gangs, violence, as well as his first crush and being a witness to something he wishes he never would have seen. The Adventures of Harley, not Davidson, from author Harley Angel, is available on Audible, narrated by James Pryor. It is perfect to listen to on your way to or home from work. Order your copy right now. Hey, Gen Xers, there's a hilarious podcast you will want to add to your playlist. Controversy with Bert and Augie, available on your favorite podcast platform. Brought to you by host Bert and Augie. Listen along to their humorous talks about politics, world news, pop culture, and everything in between. It's a podcast about everything made to upset you. And they'll give you financial tips as well as talk about what's going on in the world through the eyes of Gen Xers. Get ready for no BS talks about anything and everything 
everything about how the world is going crazy. Controversy with Bert and Augie is a show that will have you laughing along with every episode as you listen to their commentary. Tune into Controversy with Bert and Augie, available on Spotify at your favorite podcast platform. Start listening right now. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Okay, so this just came across the wire. Speaking of betrayals. Oh, my goodness. Another one. Here we go with another one. Yeah. You know, and by the way, that thing about coming across the wire, when I first started working in radio, we had a wire, an AP wire machine where the stuff would I remember print those. up. Remember you'd hear it on the news, tick, 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 or was that just a sound effect? They would no, always we had, have no, the they wire. sounded that way. Yeah, and they would have, that would be on the news all the time. In fact, some news things had that in their opening yeah. credits. It, yeah, and uh, if it was like, Breaking, breaking news, it would do a beep, and then it would come, and it was so loud, and it was, it, but it was, it was kind of cool. Anyway, this, this just came across the wire, and it's, um, sucks. Hope Hicks claims that Trump refused to put out an anti-violence statement before the Capitol riot. January 6th committee recommends four criminal charges for Trump in unanimous vote, including insurrection and obstruction. So now they got Hope Hicks, you know. It's it's easy to go after Hope Hicks, and I'm pretty disappointed in her too and upset. But I don't think people realize the pressure some of these people are on. You know, someone like Hope Hicks. I'm not excusing her or defending her statements against Trump. Don't misunderstand me. But for how many years has Hope Hicks been harassed? I mean, she's just Ivanka's friend. You know, Mm -hmm. some other you know some rich girl who's gotten by on her. Daddy's money and her good looks, right? Never did anything. And I think she was a and Ralph Lauren model, something She's like very pretty. Yeah, and and for how many years have they been harassing her? What what they've been doing to people around Trump, like yeah. Hope Hicks? They've cracked. It, it's almost like it's it's psychological torture, yeah. much much like would go on with um, uh, Guantanamo detainees or mm-hmm. Al Qaeda prisoners in these black sites. These a lot of these people around Trump, they've had their entire lives turned upside down. They're questioned. Endlessly, they're harassed in public. They're harassed by law enforcement. They're harassed by they wear them television down. people. They wear them down, and, and they're afraid yeah. of their own future. She's a young girl. They break them, and uh, yeah, they and they're her. they're afraid of their own future. Um, and you know, I'm sure when they question them, they have ways of getting. You know, Brian and I watch a lot of ID. These you see interrogations, and uh, they just have ways of asking you a question to get the answer they want. Mm-hmm. Really, yeah. No, that's, I mean, that's just what they do. And, you know, it, there's going to be more people who mm-hmm. are close to Trump's circle. Well, they don't want to go down with like what them. they see as the sinking ship. They don't want to, they don't want to be dragged into this. It's scary. They're frightened too. And they don't want to end it's up getting terrible. jammed up. I mean, they, yeah, they've been tortured so for So they're going to leave him out on his own. I mean, everybody's really, he really just has a very few small, small group, it seems, of people in his circle and uh, and, and us and the American right. people. But more and more people are turning on him. Uh, people, like I said, that worked for him, that dined with him, that he confided in. And I don't think Hope Hicks would have said this unless she was under uh, oath um, and they questioned her in a certain way. I think she feels like she's kind of being forced to say this. Um, so like you said, I don't necessarily blame her um, it's a scary situation. Yeah. Now, um, on another topic, the New York Times, the New York Times put out their crossword puzzle, and it was it looked like a swastika. Did you guys see this? Oh my god! I'm it's a swastika. It right now. It's a Let swastika. Turn- it's a swastika. Yeah. Now that's before you start filling out the letters. I don't think they would have picked up on um, that right away. Oh it's- no, they made it. Made I don't know. Yeah. They, they they didn't notice it, and it's you know the New York Times has defended. Their swastika-shaped crossword published on the first night of Hanukkah and insists it's a common crossword design as Netanyahu accuses the New York Times of burying the Holocaust. Now, let me tell you, okay, I'm I'm looking at this. That is a swastika, and there's no way you could look at that and see anything else. And uh, that that's not an accident. That that is something. You know, it's it's like. Um. Some of you may be familiar with this, but most of you are probably not. There was a gay. 
animator who worked on Mm -hmm. the Disney movie, The Little Mermaid. Yeah. And when the movie poster and everything came out, the castle of Ariel, The Little Mermaid, the towers in the castle are penises. Some of them. Yes, they're Some penises. Yeah. And um, we had that poster. We had that movie Emily's poster room. when our daughter was, we didn't, we didn't know. even notice it. And then we found out it was penises. And then we took it right down. Yeah, and we threw it away. Uh, we should have kept it because it's probably worth a lot of money now. Maybe. But uh, well, it was, it was, she was born in 99, so that was a 90s movie. That was and, her favorite movie. And it was girl. an inside joke of this, this um, gay animator who got the penis castle in The Little Mermaid. And you can look that up online and verify it. And that's the same thing that happened here. Someone got you this so? got this crossword swastika. And I'm not saying they're necessarily a Nazi, but but uh, uh, someone thought. And I, and I love how the New York Times and many others are excusing this swastika crossword puzzle after everything they put Trump through with that Nick Fuentes guy that he didn't even know. I'd like to know. If any, I don't do the New York Times crossword puzzle. Maybe I should because I do like crossword puzzles. Um, I'd like to know if any of you do them. Is that a common pu- a swastika? Uh, sticker? No. The, well, whatever you want to label it. Is that a common design? Do you see that? Have you seen that before? Some people do the puzzle. All the, what is it? Every day they come out with a new one. I don't get the New York Times. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't like crossword puzzles. Yeah, but uh, look at it. Is this a common? The swastika? sticker is that a swastika? No, for the crossword puzzle, their defense is it's a common. They yeah. have certain designs for crossword puzzles. Well, is that a common one? Do you see well, often? You know what? If it's a common one, they use every time. They shouldn't. They're, they still they're doing swastikas more often. Then. Well, is, is <laughs> the question is is Alyssa Milano going to be outraged the way she was outraged at Turning Point USA when the stage yeah. was shaped like a swastika, which it was. Um, <laughs> is, is she going to be outraged over this and go out and buy yeah. another Mercedes or whatever? Yeah, exactly. She's instead of what was she going to buy? She bought a Volkswagen. She's going to buy a Volkswagen instead of a Tesla. Get rid of her Tesla. Yeah. Her so maybe she can go out and buy a Mercedes if she mm-hmm. can afford it. Buy a Mercedes now. Out being outraged. Yeah. Over these this. these these people are always outraged unless it's That's one of the liberals sure. that do it. You know, you know. There's a movie with John Cusack that came out about 15 or 20 years ago. And it's about Hitler before he became the the leader of the Nazis. And oh, what, yeah, it's good. It's called, I can't remember the name of the movie. It's John Cusack. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the name of the movie. But uh, it's about Hitler. It's right after World War I, and he's mm-hmm. basically homeless. And, and you see Hitler when he first joins the, the Nazis. And, the, and you know, the, it, this is a Hollywood movie. John Cusack's, and he could probably, you, look, you can look it up. He plays an art it. dealer. It's called Max. It's called Max. He plays an art dealer, right? And and he's like rejects his art because he was an artist. He, he is an art. Yeah, John Cusack an plays, art a, plays a Jewish art dealer and, and Hitler actually works for the guy. But anyway, yeah. Hitler is just getting recruited by the Nazi party and they introduce themselves as the National Socialist Party. Yeah. And they, you know, and, and it's a Hollywood movie. Liberals are always into defending um, terrible things. So they say the name of the because, party. Yeah, because they can they they do all the terrible things. Well, I remember the line from the movie. So they're trying to they're, they're, the Nazis are recruiting Hitler in this John Cusack movie Max. It's a Hollywood movie, and they make a point of saying it's the National Socialist Workers Party, but we're not socialist. Yeah, right. And why do you got it in the name? Exactly. I know? Know, people always say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, there's there's but so, it's the, only in the name. No, the Nazis were socialists. Okay, so Kevin McCarthy. Okay, so he thinks, you know, he, he, he thinks he should be the one to be speaker. Listen to this. Kevin McCarthy lashes out at five Republicans who vow to vote against him for speaker. Uh, McCarthy, it goes on and on. Uh, McCarthy joined uh, Maria Bartiromo, I, who I don't really like Maria Bartiromo. She's constantly yelling on TV. She yells too much. I agree. With, I like Doesn't, her, but she screams at the television. Oh, my it's goodness. Her and Judge Janine, they scream. I like them both, though, but, you know. Oh. They, they scream at the TV too much. Oh, anyway, Kevin McCarthy joined Maria Bartiromo to wa- wage war against the House Republicans who say they will never allow McCarthy to be speaker. Many mm-hmm. House Republicans are concerned that McCarthy is too weak and unprincipled for the job. Yeah, plus he's a rhino and a never yeah. Trumper. McCarthy has been threatening Republican House members for nearly a month. <laughs> um, this guy's crazy. To vote for them. Um, but look what he did to Cawthorn. Maybe he's giving, and, and Marjorie Taylor Greene apparently. Yeah. So. He's going around uh, threatening people and blackmailing people. Well, this is what he says. He says yeah. five members. This is Kevin McCarthy talking. Five members want to hold up our ability to move forward. Is that kind of like that royal we like Pence? Yeah. 
Um, Him and, and Frank Luntz. You know, what, is he the only guy that can do it? He, he is, Kevin McCarthy feels so entitled. Oh, yes. Doesn't he? Yeah, he's like Pelosi with a penis, basically. Pelosi They're, with a penis? Yeah, he's the male version of Pelosi. They're two of a kind. Oh. She would do anything to be in that position, too. And, and God knows what she uh, did to get into that position when she first started off. And I'm sure she played the same kind of games. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they got this new lady mayor in L.A., and they're all excited, you know. Not, not that she knows what she's doing or is going to do a good job, but she crossed off some more, you know, boxes on the on the thing. So a big problem in L.A., of course, is the homeless crisis, and she's got a solution for it. Listen to what she's doing with mm. the uh, homeless in L.A. Are you still going to allow LAPD and sanitation officers to do these sweeps of encampments? No, we, these are not sweeps at all. This is getting people to move on their own. But then after the person leaves, sanitation is absolutely going to have to be there. No question about it. But this is not coercing people. This is not ticketing people or incarcerating people. This is moving people from tents to hotels or motels. Okay, so they're going to move the people from the tents to hotels and motels, which this is in where Los Angeles in Los Angeles. That's the, so they're going to the get rid of Skid Row, or is this in Venice, or where is this I didn't. All that's over? I don't know. I don't know. But I, they're going to start taking people off the streets of L.A. It's a problem. Them Once you get them in a hotel or a motel, you're never going to get them out. And you know the thing about this homeless problem that they have in California. I never hear anyone talk about why they have a homeless problem. It's it's not the weather. I've heard some people blame the weather. We have better weather in Florida year round because mm -hmm. it doesn't ever get cold here except one or two days a yeah, year. Yeah, it gets cold in Los Angeles. The, the, it gets cold during the summer in Los Angeles yeah. by Florida standards. The reason there's so many homeless in, in Los Angeles is because it's just the cost of living is too high. And, of course, not everyone who's homeless is a working poor person. You know, there's a lot of – but a lot of these people that are homeless, they just can't get together enough money to I don't live. Think that's it. it I, I that's think a big that, part of it. I think in these liberal cities, they encourage homelessness. They do, and people flock to it. They give them uh, free drugs, free needles. They let them live on the streets. That's a lot tents, of it too. Yeah, and they're accommodating. They encourage it and they enable it. So people that live that life flock to that place. Um, if you have a city that um, allows that kind of behavior yeah. and the weather is relatively nice, but if you have a city that that is kind, I should say, uh, I don't know if that's the right word, to homelessness. And I think, look, we should help people, but there's a difference between helping people and encouraging that kind of behavior, encouraging yeah. drug use. Yeah. And when you do that, people that live that life will flock to that area and take advantage mm -hmm of the situation. I think that's a lot of it mm. too, what's going on there. I don't think all those people are from California. I think they went well, there because they knew, well, I can live on the street you and know, get free needles and, and get free food and, and I'll be the leave me alone. In Florida, there's a, there, there are homeless people in Florida, but when you're in the liberal areas is when you see most of them. Okay. Like in our community where we live yeah. um, in the part of Florida we're in years ago, we had a big panhandling problem yeah, and did. you would be at an intersection and there'd be a homeless panhandler on every corner of the intersection. And we live in a nice neighborhood mm. and it was a problem. And they, they passed a local ordinance forbidding panhandling and they're all gone. But I go exactly. to, I go to one County South of ours. We kind of live on the County line between two counties and they're both Democrat counties, but our County we're in the same, we're, you know, we're in Palm beach County where Mar-a-Lago is. Mm -hmm. So, um, Palm Beach County is Democrat, but it's but the county south of us, Broward County, it's also Democrat. But Broward County is hardcore liberal yeah. Democrat, where our county is a little more conservative Democrat. Mm -hmm. Even though I I wish that it was all Republican, but Mar Lago's here. But anyway, you you I cross the county line into the more liberal county. It's homeless people everywhere because they don't they they allow it, like you said, Kathy. Yeah, they and allow it. So it. that's that's why the people go there. That's probably the people that were here where they passed an ordinance where they wouldn't allow it and they would get arrested, they're like, fine. And then they go live somewhere else where they allow it. So that's a lot of what's yeah. going on. Yeah. And apparently now they're trying to clean up this mess and, uh, and, and this is their solution. So I'm wondering if they want to put them in hotels and motels, are they going to, I'm assuming these are not going to be like the Plaza or the Waldorf. 
but there's probably a lot of hotels in Los Angeles. Are they going to just pay? Don't be so sure. Pay, they're going to pay for them to live there. Yeah. Right. The yeah. government will pay for Feed it. Them. And where are they get what? What's going to happen with these hotel owners? Are they going to be forced to do this? Sure, you can't turn them away. Well, how how can the government force you to take them in if you say I don't want this kind I don't want drug addicts or this kind of thing in my they hotel that I own? They don't care. You can't deny no. them. You can't and, deny them. That. And you know, do, you have do, to do it no matter what. Yeah, sure, sure. You know, Ugh, it it damages your property because who wants to stay in a hotel that's housing homeless and crackheads? Well, what if they turn the whole? What if they turn your entire hotel? Into this, they I mean, do, then your property's worth nothing. Then you're in trouble. Be, nobody's going to want to come and buy yeah, your property. That's and, right. And you're you're right. They they'll destroy your hotel. They don't and, care. Yeah, yeah. That, it's, I, it's bad. I wouldn't be surprised if they start taking over the Airbnbs in Los Angeles for the homeless. What a mess, isn't I tell it? You. Just don't live in a in a city like that. In, that's in for a sure. Liberal run city, like you said, our area is is liberal, but it's not like this radical. We don't have those kind of issues here. They're reasonable here. You know what I mean? Like th- we had the issue with the panhandlers in our area when we first moved here and the people complained so much that lived here because it was it was just too much. It was on every corner and people were concerned about hitting these people. They would walk in between the cars and in the trap. And I'd say to you many times, you know, not only does this look bad, but I'm concerned somebody's going to hit one of these people. They're very yeah, brazen. Then they sue you. They come right up to your car Um, and another problem is the local hospital, whenever you go to the ER, it was full of these drug addicts and, and it's a problem. It really affects the whole community and the community got together. We don't live in a big area and they finally kicked them out. Yeah. And that's what you have to do because when you encourage that, you're only going to make it worse there. You're just going to get more people flocking to you. Well, when I had a a cheap Wrangler, it was really awful. I had a a soft top cheap Wrangler. And I always drove with the top off and sometimes the doors off. And the panhandlers oh, would yeah. get so pushy. It's very bold. And um I I don't carry um I don't carry money. I don't carry change. I I'm above money. No. <laughs> I just I just use my debit card for everything and Apple Pay. But I you know, but when I had my Jeep Wrangler and, and I'm at the light, I'm kind of stuck there. I got yeah. the doors off, I got the top down, and they and they would just stand. And you had a couple scary instances. Well, there was where one guy come up to you. One guy said, I don't have anything. And he's like, Well, what about in the ashtray there? You got anything in the ashtray I can have? And he's it's reaching crazy. into the car I mean, and who I'm does stuck. I think he is. I they could, just think they're entitled to your money. I know. It's, it's just, it was it's incredible. It was nuts. I don't like people coming up to you and coming up to your car at all. Now I've been in cities where they have panhandlers. Like I've been to San Francisco, New York city. They have those people, those street performers that you drop a few coins or whatever. And to me, that's different. These are people that walk around. They, they look like they're strung out and they will come up to your car and like get demanding, like they'll demand money from you. And I think that's really bad. Oh, it really is. wrong. It's awful. So clearly they have a problem. But, you know, one thing we know about liberals is that they don't they never know how to fix a problem property. This will properly. This will just make things worse. And more and more people You know, our daughter goes to California a lot. And she said it's cheaper to live in California now than in Florida mm-hmm. because so many people have left California. The property yeah. values have gone way down. The rents have gone way down because nobody lives there anymore. They've all left. That's why the property values are so high and the rents are so high here. They've all moved to Florida. Mm-hmm. That's what happens. Well, listen, um, I just I just want to say something in closing before we go about all this criminal referral stuff. This is a time to we're in a, we're in a scary time right now. OK, but but watch very closely. The, we knew this was coming for years now just finally happened what we knew Th- this committee had determined what that they were going to do this before they even had their first meeting yeah but but here here's the thing guys okay this is what you want to start looking at now watch the reactions from people in the news and publicly and in government about this and start to take note who doesn't defend trump i'm not talking about I don't Someone, think anybody will. I, I, what I mean by that is there are people out there that should be very vocal today, tomorrow, and the rest of this week against this disgusting thing that happened today. But look and see who you don't hear from. And also t- take, take note of who does not come out and defend Trump. With that being said, we're out of time for today. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. And remember, the Brian Craig Show podcast is on all podcast platforms. 
We don't just up, we upload to YouTube as well. And if you don't listen on YouTube, we upload the podcast on YouTube in a live premiere. And, and the reason we do that, when we do a live premiere on YouTube, there's a chat room there that you can participate in during the podcast that is as active and as opinionated as my morning chat room on the radio, but we upload that in the uh, early evening hours. So you can find me on YouTube. Just search for Brian Craig, Brian, the Brian Craig Show on YouTube. But the but the podcast is on all podcast platforms. Wherever you get your podcast, search for the Brian Craig Show podcast. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Again, thanks everyone for tuning in and we will talk to you next time. What would you do if you woke up in a place that was heavily alien and you had no idea how you got there? In the book from author M.K. Hussein, Fabric, Day One, Origins Unknown, available on Amazon, meet Max, who wakes up suddenly to find he's prisoner in a maximum security facility. He doesn't remember much, not even his name or why he's been detained. Somehow, he manages to escape the wretched place only to discover something far worse. The world is not how he remembers it before he had awakened. The past, present, and future have somehow collided into one. Nothing is the same as it was before. Trapped on this new world, he finds out he only has three days to live and only three days to find a cure. He has to walk through a mystical door that has only room for one. The only problem is he's not the only prisoner on the planet. What happens next? Find out when you read Fabric Day One, Origins Unknown from author M.K. Hussein. Available on Amazon in Kindle and paperback.